Hi, I'm Argir Zarnesko and I'm affiliated with the BAS Center for Applied Mathematics as well as the uh, Simeon Stoilov Institute in Ukraine. Hi, I'm Shen Chen. I'm from Hong Kong University of Science Technology, uh, Mechanical Engineering and Aerospace. I'm Valery Slavistikov. I'm from the University of Bristol, Department of Mathematics. Hello, my name is Michal Amix. I come from the University of Ljubljana, Faculty of Mathematics and Physics and Joseph Stephen Institute in Ljubljana. So there has been an explosion of uh, new materials in the, well, realistically, in the last century or so. And uh, they have quite amazing capabilities and nowadays we see them all over the place uh, in our daily lives. I mean, uh, they do the most uh, exciting things that we interact with in our daily lives. These are responsible for the displays in uh, computers, in phones. Uh, they are uh, creating uh, new lighter uh, materials uh, such as uh, you know these uh, polymer materials for uh, airplanes and then uh, they are in our bodies in various uh, types of uh, biological implants so you know there is a, a huge uh, development uh, in uh, the creation and uh, the use of these these new materials and um, more recently, people, uh, by this I mean uh, mostly the physicists, engineers, got interested in uh, creating uh, purposefully built materials and uh, there were some uh, uh, institutional uh, initiatives towards this, uh, in, uh, like uh, the EPSRC called uh, design, of design of Materials, something like this, some form of this. And then uh, in US, um, the genome, the Materials Genome Initiative. Uh, so overall, these are initiatives um, more in the physics and engineering uh, side, not so much in the mathematics. And uh, the aim of this program was to look at the mathematical problems uh, related to these uh, exciting developments in uh, physics and uh, engineering and uh, try to see how uh, mathematics uh, can help and uh, uh, you know, uh, to see what kind of new problems uh, this would uh, generate in mathematics as well. And, and indeed, there's a special added value of this program. Right? Like the real interest is in design and optical design, uh, optimal design, because the material development in many fields goes across various directions, but it's, there's really a room for a very dedicated optimization and some guidance from theories, thematical theories, that would help to, to shape and actually move some, uh, some fields even further as they are today. I mean, there is this example <coughs> of uh, uh, Dick James where uh, they had this purposefully built uh, optimized materials, the alloys, right? Actually, uh, usually discovery of new materials it, it's not very hard. There are many, many materials discovered all of a sudden. However, it takes decades or several decades to optimize that specific property people want to optimize. But usually, um, traditionally, people just uh, cook a lot of materials and do characterization and find the best one. However, that's very, very time consuming. That's where mathematicians can come we try to understand, instead of just blindly search, we understand how to optimize the property, what is the structure property relationship, and how to model the material. If we know how to model the material, extract some modeling like what we wrote here, then we can do all kinds of mathematics optimization study of it, and uh, we can direct ourselves to the optimum property of the material quickly and fast. Yeah, well, the essential idea is pretty simple. What we want to do is we want to use mathematics to give a guidance how to get uh, the best material. Well, we just have to define what the best material is. For us, the best material is the one that is going to have specific properties that are given to us by people from engineering, physics, and so on. 
And the general title of, that we address, so we speak about new materials. This is a very broad field of materials which one can think of. So this is why we focused on sunlines, right? For example, colloidal materials, composite alloys, heterostructures, also 3D printed materials. So there are some lines which specific which we want to work, work on, right? Which we really think where this optimal design can actually really be applied and can be applied in a very, in a very good and efficient manner. Recently, well, by recently I mean say 10, 20 years ago, uh, new type of materials have been found, and uh, these are two-dimensional materials, for instance. And uh, one of the ideas is to try to engineer new type of materials using these two-dimensional layers. So there are, you refer to graphite, right? Yeah, and and there's a huge two, success. For instance, got awarded, uh, but not only, yes, a Nobel Prize within five years <coughs> or so. Uh, well, five, ten years of his discovery. Yeah, almost mm -hmm. Now uh, they, they have this uh, billion center built here in Cambridge. Um, so, you know, this is one of the examples of materials. Uh, and, and another addition to this, why now, is that the, from the line of uh, metamaterials and 3D printing, so actually a new technique got developed and it <coughs> keep, keeps getting developed on three dimensional printing. So, in principle, now in terms of material science, one is in position to create, in principle, arbitrary building blocks. So in principle, any shape, any geometry you can think of, right? Of course, it's, it has limitations. One can really not, cannot go really so well down to nanoscales, but even this is being addressed from a bit different lines. So it's really also a new methodology, right? A new, a new approach to materials when one can think it, that what's only really the imagination is the limit in terms of how uh, to create the building blocks and uh, exactly. the material itself. And, so talk, and talking about the shape memory alloys, usually traditionally people think shape memory alloys can be used as like a, the implant or some medical devices. But nowadays people uh, discover people can really use phase transition materials to do energy conversion. That opens a, another very broad area of very urgent application of such materials. That's why we need to understand this material mathematically and design new material using mathematics. No, well, again, in some sense, mathematics is going to give a guidance on how to combine this material. Because really, it's like you have a Lego. You are trying to combine something, but you actually don't know what you are doing if you don't use mathematics. So if you do, well, we can try to actually combine what we need. That's the idea. I mean, in some sense, it's like a recipe for cooking, right? You have all the ingredients, but then it's a matter of what is the optimal uh, quantities uh, you want to put. And in some sense, that's where mathematical models can help you in seeing what are the optimal ratios between various uh, ingredients. Well, one of the main challenge, challenges is diversity of fields that we are trying to combine. Essentially, there are people from solid state physics, from soft matter, from mathematics, different branches, different fields, and so on. And uh, they all speak different languages. And this is extremely difficult to combine because uh, people may work on the same problem. They speak about the same stuff, but they don't understand each other because they are using kind of really different language. And uh, one of the basic ideas is to actually bring them together so that they can sit down, talk, discuss, and understand what essentially they're doing from different points of view. Yeah, and formulate everything within a common mathematical framework uh, that uh, each one can relate to and uh, that they can use in order to make progress. Well, it might be actually difficult to formulate things in the rigorous mathematical framework, but uh, just to really have this uh, symbiosis of uh, different points of view can create something that's more or less, uh, as you said, it's like you are trying to put things in the cooking pot and then uh, at the end of the day you're going to have soup. So and the quality of the soup is going to depend on the ingredients and on the combination. Sure. So. Yeah, so I think this scientific wise, so definitely this, this the first added value is the combination of fields and diversity of participants. Indeed, as you mentioned, we go from physics, applied mathematics, mathematics, engineering. I'm sure we have chemists here, even yeah, yeah, be, maybe you well, biologists yeah, yeah. and so on. So it's really a diverse fields. Well, yeah, it's yeah. really diverse fields, diverse fields of expertise, work on the related topics and it's actually to, to bring them together. 
and, uh, and I can just say for me personally, I, I already have gained insight on from, from di totally different fields, which I want to now apply in the context. I, I'm more from, I come from soft matter physics, so it's really, I already see, see things which I would like to do and just take them from solid state people to soft matter, do something interesting. And I'm sure there's other people here, here who just try to do exactly the, the, the same thing. My background is more like uh, condensed or solid materials. So uh, we, we look at phase transforming materials. In old days, phase transforming materials, as I just mentioned, mostly used for the um, implant or stent. Um, but nowadays, um, people find, um, as the engineering side goes finer and finer, and as the design side goes to better and better, people can really use this material for the brain. So the brain, we need very, very uh, tiny little tube that very uh, good engineered, and so that we can, uh, so that the surgeon can insert into the brain, and we have like the blood vessel um, that pulls, apply force on it. So mechanics side also um, get into it. Some mathematics need to be done to uh, optimize, um, not just optimize the design of the. Um, the, the, the tube itself, but also design of the material from the bottom, like from the lattice parameter itself, and what math actually um, governing the, the, the fatigue of such material, that's what we are really look at. And I think that's very cutting edge application and really can make a good life to people. So, yeah. Yeah, so our interest is from the application side, we to, to mention on metamaterials. So metamaterials are are essentially, it's a material built of very complex little shapes and geometries, which essentially, when one shines with light on them, this material can really do interesting work. It can control in a very interesting way how the light reflects, how it behaves, how it moves. Uh, moves and, uh, so, our line here is to look at on anisotropic metamaterials, so negative refractive index. This is, this is the kind of topics, and in particular, into relation, into relation of topology. And so people, when people speak about the application of metamaterials, so the more popular words which go with that is invisibility, it's perfect lenses. So it's really, so essentially it's controlling the, the light as if it was flowing, like flow of light. So it's really an advanced way how to, how to manipulate light and, and, and photonic applications. Yeah, so uh, overall we had uh, one uh, workshop exploring uh, the relationship between uh, uh, the academia and uh, uh, application to the industry focused on the hard materials and we'll have another one focused on the soft materials and uh, yeah, the, the, there are uh, basically endless uh, number of possible applications of course in the short term we'll just uh, focus on a couple one a couple that were mentioned here but uh, really the possibilities are limitless Um, it really helps uh, people from different different fields to know each other and make friends with each other. Most importantly, can really do things together scientifically. So, for example, uh, we have this uh, Newton Gateway uh, event that really invite people from academia and people from uh, industrial, and we have like one day program and people give lectures. And uh, there's one um, there's one guy from Scotland. Um, he is the founder and CEO of a thermal thermal storage company. And Dick James, he's a pure academia. He presented a energy conversion material by phase transformation and used some mathematics to model the the, the energy conversion. And they have they obviously do not know each other at the first time, but they have a very nice chemistry. And during the spring school, um, that CEO, um, Andrew Bissell, I guess, he he's kindly sent us some demo um, and let us to do something in the spring school. Very nice. And thanks to this program, yeah. So I just want to mention that uh, there are a lot of young people uh, attending this program and uh, post 
Bulldogs PhD students, we, we have the spring school specifically designed for, for young people, where we have five, I guess, five topics, yeah. yes, five topics covered by very good speakers. And uh, it's actually a good opportunity for them to understand the diversity of this field and the challenges of this field and uh, what they actually can contribute here. Because the whole program is essentially designed to give impact to this specific idea of designing new materials using mathematics. And uh, if these young people are going to kind of go and take their ideas and try to push them, I think it will be extremely good outcome of what we are doing here.